Satnam, everybody. Welcome to tonight's Kundalini Yoga class. It is a special event. We're going to be uh, sponsoring Love is My Religion. And I've got Raymond Ussery uh, here. And we're going to give him a couple minutes just to tell us about uh, the, you know, the organization and the nonprofit and how you can contribute uh, to the program as well. So Raymond, the floor is all yours. Well, thank you so much. And uh, Dave, thank you for hosting this, this evening's uh, yoga and meditation and music. Um, really looking forward to it. Uh, so I am Raymond Usri, and I believe I've met some of you. Uh, I am Raymond Usri. I'm the executive director for Love Is My Religion. We are a nonprofit, and our mission is to create a world where love wins. And we'll know that our mission is fulfilled when our vision is also fulfilled. And our vision is that people act from mindfulness, kindness, and acceptance. And the chief vehicle that we use to achieve our mission and our vision, uh, we're, actually our chief vehicle is called the Community Roundtable, where we give people a chance to really be heard. And we do that by bringing groups that people might consider, they consider each other the other. So last Saturday, we had an event where we brought together conservatives and liberals. We did a lot of work on communication, and we just gave each side a chance to listen to each other. And then we did a, a really heartfelt debrief. It was really moving. I was moved to tears at least a couple of times. And our next event coming up is going to be August 15th. And we're going to bring together people of color and white people. Then later in September, we'll do uh, gay and straight. And then in October, right before the election, so to speak, we'll have liberals and conservatives round two. And again, the, 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 the drive is to give people a chance to be heard. And it's all in an overall thrust to help bring about the end of, of hate crime. So that is Love is My Religion. So thank you for participating tonight. And if you want to donate to Love is My Religion, uh, it's an easy thing to do. You just go to L-I-M-R dot U-S and click the donate button. So thank you very much for listening and happy to be doing yoga with y'all. Thank you, Raymond. And I've also, uh, somebody else I'd like to introduce is Vicki Jopdaram Rose, who uh, is going to be uh, doing the last part of our set tonight. and. Vicky's in Los Angeles, and we actually got to play together. She's a fantastic musician. Her music's on Spotify. Uh, and I think there's a link I put to your website if you want more information on you know how to get that you know in the invitations that are on Love Is My Religion and also on the this event site as well. So I don't know uh, anything you want to say before we get started. I'm very pleased to be here, and um, I love the idea of everybody listening. My, my thing is the sound current, music and chanting. Uh, so I think I will be quiet for now and just let the yoga do its work. Satnam. Satnam. So Satnam, for new people, Satnam is truth is my identity. So you'll hear me uh, offer that mantra when doing the asanas or the poses in the yoga kriya that we're going to be doing tonight. So uh, why don't we, we're going to tune in with uh, the Adi Mantra. And the Adi Mantra is Om Namo Guru Dev Namo. So we're going to do that three times. And if you don't know it, it's fine. You can hum along and just make some noise. Uh, but we do the Adi Mantra to connect ourselves to the golden chain of yogis, uh, my teacher, my teacher's teacher, and all the yogis that you know have come before. So we're bringing that uh, energy, that wisdom into this practice right now. So uh, teaching online is a, is a new thing, and, but we are together apart. Although we're not together in the physical body, you know, we can access everybody 
in the subtle body. So just, you know, if you want to take a moment just to get present to everybody that's on uh, this Zoom, you know, we, we are together that way energetically. So not physically, but in the subtle body. So um, let's get started. So in an easy cross-legged position. So let's just make some heat with our hands, get a little friction. 72,000 nerve endings, stimulate the nervous system. And we're gonna- It's really hard to hear you, Dave. Is that better? Might just take this mic off. Oh, can you hear me better? I think I think that's better. Yes. Good. Okay. All right. So, rub your hands together and place the thumbs against the sternum with a straight spine and a slight uh, chin lock. So the spine is straight all the way up and down the spinal column, like you're sitting against the wall. So we're gonna take an inhale and an exhale. Just allow the body to settle. Inhale. And exhale. And we'll take a big inhale for the Adi Mantra. Om And release the posture. And just notice that you, that subtle shift that's taken place just from tuning in and doing the mantra. So we're gonna do, before we get started, we're gonna do a quick refresher on Breath of Fire. This Kriya that we're gonna to do tonight is the Kriya for Elevation. Uh, one of the things I like about this Kriya is, and I, I think it's an appropriate time for this Kriya is, you know, with everything going on in the world, it is a time to elevate and maybe look at things a little differently. So, you know, if I lost my contact lens, the first thing I'm not gonna do is drop down to the ground and start looking around for it. I wanna get as high as I can to look for it because that's gonna give me a better view. And also, uh, this is just me. My, my, my opinion is with, you know, we, we took a quick jolt in our humanity this year and our nervous systems for many of us haven't caught up yet. So we're gonna be strengthening our immune system, our nervous system to be in this new, I'll just call it new paradigm or new reality. So that, that's what we're gonna be working on tonight. We're gonna to be elevating ourselves, elevating our perspective. I think it goes uh, great with love is my religion, which is about elevating our humanity and that, that's what we'll be working on tonight. So quick refresher on Breath of Fire because we're going to be doing that. So uh, pretend you're a dog. Uh, 
and you stick your tongue out and, and pant. And you'll feel that on the exhale, your navel point, which is about three finger widths below your belly button, you'll feel that constrict or pull back. All right. All right, so now, so we actually do it through the nose. So we're gonna do that through a closed mouth through the nose. So it looks just like this. Now, one thing about Breath of Fire, it, 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 I can, I've seen people there, I mean, they're doing Breath of Fire. It's, that's not Breath of Fire. It's a very subtle uh, motion. It's a flutter on that navel, on the navel point. So if, if it feels like you're working too hard at Breath of Fire, you probably are. So, um, so the, the first, the first uh, pose is, uh, ego eradicator. I'm going to back up just a little bit to make sure I'm in the frame. So in, in an easy cross-legged position, we're going to raise our arms to 60 degrees. So Kundalini Yoga is, this, is a science. It's the science of tension and angles. And the science is very specific. So 60 is not the same as 45. 60 is 60. Now the thumbs are pointing straight up to the ceiling and we're putting a tension. It's not a fist. It's actually the, the fingertips touch the pads of the finger. So I'm like, I'm like this with my, with the thumbs pointing to the ceiling. Got it? And start breath of fire. We're gonna do that for three minutes. And begin.
sitting next to you, you hear it. Inhale it, inhalation and the exhalation. One minute. On Kundalini Yoga, there's no pain. Without pain, stop what you're doing, modify the discomfort you may have, but pain we don't do. So only take what the body will give. Twenty-nine seconds. Thank you. 
less than 48 seconds. Next asana, legs. Let me adjust that a little bit. Legs spread apart. And, and if you can touch, if you can hook on to your big toe, great. I'm not quite there today. So I'm going to land wherever I land with a straight spine. So, so you inhale up. Now my, so the, the coaching on this, it's, uh, so you inhale up and you exhale down, but when you make the turn to either side, you really want to stop and rotate your spine to the left. So like this, so down, inhale up, exhale down, and we're moving the pelvis or the spine in the direction that we're going to be going that helps protect our lower spine and begin. Keep it going. Less than 52 seconds. Big toe, 
the thumb pressing into the big toenail. Inhale up, exhale down. Do this just for a minute. Inhale, sock, exhale down. Inhale up, exhale down. Cobra pose. Now, I, two two shoulder surgeries later, I'm not I'm not there yet. But this is what Cobra looks like. And I'll give you an option if you've got some bad shoulders. So this is Cobra. Not a very good one. So you want your hands underneath your shoulders, and we're going to do a breath of fire. Now I do it in Sphinx pose. I'm gonna come down to my belly and I'm gonna be on my elbows, okay? And so in this, in this position, we wanna really get the, uh, you can get the lower back to really bounce and it'll release if it's, if it's tight, but don't, don't push it. All right, so begin. Inhale. 
and exhale. We're gonna slowly make our way back to an easy cross-legged position. So however you need to get there safely. All right, so we're going to do a, a shoulder shrug, although the manual calls it a shoulder shrug. Imagine that. So I, you can do this uh, quickly. I like to do it slowly. So I'll bring my shoulders up and I just let them drop and I, and I let the bounce do the work. So for me, I, I do it very slowly, but very intentionally. It's almost like, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. And I get that bounce going and it just releases all that tension. And that's a good thing you can do during your work day. You're sitting at the computer, this one feels really good. I probably do this once or twice a day anyway. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Uh. And inhale up, squeeze. And like someone's pulling you up from the top of your head. Squeeze, squeeze, squeeze. Squeeze everything. And release. All right, one of my personal favorites, the neck roll. Now the key to the neck roll is you gotta go very, very, very slow. And the reason you go very slow, it looks like this. If you go fast, those shoulders wanna come up. The, uh, the body wants to protect the head. So if we, let, if we let the head do all the work, you're gonna get a much better result. So really, we wanna go very, very, very slowly. And if you, you, you may notice your shoulders start to come up, it means you're going too fast and you can just readjust. So uh, we're gonna go one minute. We're gonna start off going to the left. So the, drop your chin to your chest and go towards the left ear. You may feel some kinks in there. You might wanna spend some time if you have some kinks. We do this with a straight spine. Hands on the knees. And that should feel really good. Uh, Wow. 
people find it comfortable to sit on a pillow. You may not need a pillow. Right now my knee is hurting. I'm not going to sit in rock pose. So if you need to modify, you can sit in an easy cross-legged position. Uh, we're going to be doing Satriya. Yeah, so Satriya. So men, you're gonna so men cross the right thumb over the left thumb, and women go the other direction. And so the men we want to have our left pinky on the bottom and the women your right pinky will be on the bottom with your left thumb over your right and you can also just do whatever feels comfortable all right so satriya we're going to do for three minutes and this is like the last asana before our layout and then uh All right, so, so from rock pose or an easy cross-legged position, let me back up a little bit. I'm not gonna be able to get this in. So hands go straight up, straight spine, slight neck lock, Jalala Banda. So your spine is completely straight. And uh, so, so it looks like this, sat nam, sat nam. So when you say sat, you're actually, the, the navel point is gonna pull back. And again, this is a very subtle motion. It's just gonna, it should just pop back on its own. So sat nam, sat nam, sat nam, sat nam, sat nam, sat. Nam sat 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 nam Now you should feel that navel pull back when you say sat sat nam 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 sat, 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 nam sat. Nam sat, 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 
Nam Sat, Nam Sat, Nam Sat, Nam Sat, Nam Sat, Nam Sat, Nam Sat, Nam Sat, Nam Sat, Nam Sat, Nam Sat, Nam Sat, Nam Sat, Nam Sat, Nam Sat, Nam Sat, Nam Sat, Nam Sat, Nam Sat, Nam Sat, Nam Sat, Nam Sat, Nam Sat, Nam Sat, Minute and eleven seconds, Nam Sat, Nam Sat, you guys got this, Nam Sat, 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 you got it. Keep going. You can do this. Nam Sat. 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 Inhale. And exhale and hold the breath out. And apply Hula Bandha. Squeeze. Squeeze the root. And release. And if you need a drink, we're going to be doing our layout and chopped arm is going to play for us. So we're just going to be laying flat on our mat in Shavasana. And I'm going to mute. Oh, 
love. Jump. Art is such to God, such happy, such non ego, sleepy, such at Where is the harmony? 
sweet harmony. Your spirit's the strong. Your soul is the trusted. And they will bring harmony. Sweet harmony. What's so funny about peace, love, and understanding? Oh, have some faith in peace, love, and understanding. Put your faith in peace, love, and understanding. Oh, just a little faith in peace, love, and understanding. We can heal the world with peace, love, and understanding. Now please inhale. And exhale. And wiggle your fingers and toes. And rotate your hands on your wrists and the feet on the ankles. And reverse the rotations. Stretch the arms out overhead, point the toes, and stretch the body. Just like you're first getting up in the morning. Take a deep inhale here. And as you exhale, bring the knees to the chest. And rock gently side to side. Now you're going to hold on to your right knee as you keep stretch as you stretch the left leg out onto the floor. And using only the left hand, you're going to pull the right knee across the body all the way over. Turn the head to the right. And take a nice complete inhale. And a thorough exhale. And now switch sides. Your left leg will be into the chest and your right leg will be stretched out onto the floor. Using your right hand, you'll pull that left knee across the body. Turn the head to the left. Take that big, deep breath here in this beautiful diagonal stretch. And come center. Rub the hands together and the soles of the feet together. Bring the knees to the chest. And rock head to tail several times along the spine. Just like you did when you were a little kid. And come sitting up. And let's talk about a meditation. Satnam, everybody. <clears throat> you doing okay? Everyone's okay? Excellent. Okay, good. Uh, it's my pleasure to be here today. My name is Jack Dottam, and I am a Kundalini Yoga teacher for a, a few years now. 
double digits. And um, I'm also a mantra recording artist and singer. And um, I've always been singing. I'm an old punk rocker, actually. So <laughs> anyway, mantra is different than singing. Mantra is using the roof of the mouth and the palate. And as the tongue touches various what are called meridian points in the upper jaw here, the roof of the mouth, different signals are sent to the nervous system and the nervous system responds as well as the endocrine system. So we repattern ourselves. We also repattern ourselves with different sounds, right? If we say, oh, everything goes deep. We're pulling the chi or the God force into ourselves. If we say, a wa wow. You know, we're sending it up and out, right? And, and so these different mantras have uh, different effects on the body. The different meridian points have different effects on the body. There's a science to it. All I know is that when I chant, I really like it. And it is different than singing. But chanting's around and we're not the only tradition that does it. Um, and raising our voices together whether it's singing or chanting, is always very powerful. I don't care if you're a group of people doing kundalini yoga today, or you're the Gregorian monks, or you're a Baptist choir, or you are the choir at the Vatican. When we do that, when our voices lift as one, we become one and become a, become a very powerful force. And the sacred sound is felt rather than heard. And the sacred sound, it can be said, is actually reverberating the heartbeat of the universe. And there, your own heartbeat, when you merge with that heartbeat of the universe, you can experience love beyond your own preference and love beyond your own attachment. And that's how we get things done in this crazy, crazy, crazy Aquarian time now. We tap into that heart. We tap into that compassion. Compassion is love with no preference, no attachment. It's unconditional. It doesn't mean you even have to trust the person. You don't have to have them in your life. But you still have to love them. Where does this come from? I've had uh, the great pleasure and honor to uh, go high into the Himalayas in northern India, into Kashmir and Ladakh, and work with Buddhist monks. And, you know, they, they have these beautiful pujas and prayers that they chant. And I say, so, Lama Chamba, what were you chanting about? He goes, it was for compassion. And then another one, what, what was that chant about? What was it? It's for compassion. And then, Lama Chamba, what was that about? They're just for compassion. And I'm like, okay, what's the, where's all this compassion you're talking about? I, I understand, I guess I get it, but you know, you keep doing it. Where does it come from? He says, it is the belief that all of us have been somebody's mother in some lifetime before. If you can tap into the mother love, that you either had in a previous lifetime or you felt from your own mother. It's unconditional, it's clean, it's pure. A prayer from the mother is the most powerful prayer on earth. It is so strong that even when it's wrong, it's right. This is the mother. We're sitting on the mother earth. We have a lot of things going on now. My humble opinion is most of it would be solved if we start taking care of the earth. Health problems would be solved. Inequities would be solved. As soon as we know that we are sitting on our mother and we understand. Now, you may not have the greatest relationship with your mother this lifetime, but she brought you here. You did have a relationship with her in the womb. It's 
So think about your mother stuff, <laughs> whatever it may be. Maybe you are a mother. Maybe you know exactly what I'm talking about very tangibly this lifetime. Maybe you have the ability to hearken back to previous lifetimes. I just lay this out for you to get to that heart place. And we're going to do this mantra, this um, meditation called Meditation to Open the Heart. So it's the, the words are sat, like sat nam, sat kartar. So it means the true play of God, the true play of the universe. I don't know what you call God. So it's a buzzword for some people, you know, it's a trigger, but it can be universe, the divine, creator, science, nature, nothingness, the void, God. In Kundalini Yoga, we call it an acronym, generating, organizing, destroying, G-O-D, the force that keeps that whole cycle of the universe and the cosmos going. So the play of God, the true play, Satkartar, Satkartar. And when you say those R's, you can flip them on the roof of the mouth. Satkaratar. 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 Now what you're going to do with this is we're going to move the body in kind of uh, what we call a celestial communication. So you get this into your auric field. And when we work the arms, we're working right into the heart center, right into the energy of the heart chakra. If you look at how a baby is formed in the womb, the the arms come right out of the heart, and that's how we have healing hands and why we're so articulate with them as a species, right? The other thing that happens is the heart delivers those initial brain cells. That's your true intelligence is from your heart. So you're going to start here, and you're going to, this will be sucked, and then you bring your hands out just about to here, right? Car, and then all the way out, tar. So it'll be, it'll be, sat, kar, tar, sat, kar, tar, sat, kar, tar, sat, kar, tar. Now, as you get going, once you get your angles set, right, then you want to make it smooth. Sat, kar, tar, sat, kar, tar, sat, kar, tar. So anytime, we're going to do this for a few minutes, and you may even learn it enough to do it on your own. If you ever feel like your heart is locked up, and it happens. No one's perfect, right? If you ever feel that your heart is locked, locked up, you can just do this. It just opens your heart. Look at the movement. And then the word, satkaratar. That little re, re, that we do in Kundalini Yoga works on the 34th, 35th, and 36th meridian at the roof of the mouth. It opens the crown chakra. It's like your elevator button to God, right? So we can use that. So I'm going to start. Everyone put their hands in prayer. I can't, I can't lead you in the movement because of this thing. Actually, I could start you. I'll get you on the right note. Sat kartar, sat kartar, sat kartar, sat kartar. Keep the hands flexed. Sat kartar, sat kartar, sat kartar, sat kartar, sat kartar, sat kartar, sat kartar. Satkartar, 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 Satkaratar, 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 
Relax, bring the hands down for a moment. And just take a moment to let that land, however it lands in you, in your body, in your mind, in your spirit. Mm. 
the wonderful triumvirate that we had been gifted in this lifetime is our bodies, our minds, and our spirits. I know we all love our pets. I have the smartest cat in the world, you know. And, um, <clears throat> but pets don't wake up in the morning. Animals don't often wake up in the morning and say, how can I change the world? How can I make a better place? And sometimes our ideas of how to make the world a better place certainly do not match a lot of other people's. And we're in some kind of some deep stuff here in this country. There's no doubt about it. It's happening and it's happening. Okay, here we are. So the communication that compassion opens up gives us the ability to have a deep pool of patience. And the most important part of communication is to actually listen. And not listening, thinking, I already know what they're going to say and I'm ready with my answer. Really listen. And listen to them between the lines, between the words that they're saying. Hear the vibration of people's voices. Are they scared? Are they certain? Are they sure? Are they fearful? Are they happy? <clears throat> and I'm sure if everyone in this country wrote down the five most important things to them, which would probably be safety, health, their children, education, prosperity. Everyone would have the same, close to the same five things. Maybe not all in the same order. And maybe their ideas of those things would be a little different. Um, safety to me is vastly different than safety for people of color. I understand that. Safety for me is vastly different than um, a man. And all men should know that. So one more thing I'd like us to do before we close with our, <clears throat> our song is put your hands over your heart. Just put them both right here. And repeat after me. And you're saying this to your heart. Your heart is the most powerful thing in you. It serves you all day long and all night long. It's pumping the blood. It's pumping the blood. It's getting, you know, it's bringing oxygen. It's taking carbon dioxide away. It's moving nutrients. And we don't have to say, okay, beat, beat beat. The heart just serves and serves and serves without us even asking to. It's an amazing thing. And that's the energy we have in us. So repeat after me to your heart. I love you. I trust you. You are beautiful. You are wise. You beat in harmony with the greatest plan of love. You are my guiding light. And please bring your hands to prayer. If you know this song, you can sing and hum along. I can't hear what you're doing. And if you don't know the song, understand that it's a projective blessing and listen to it as if it's being sung just for you. May the long time sun shine upon you and all love around you and the pure light within you guide your way on may 
the long time sunshine upon you and all the surround you and the pure light within you guide your way on guide your way on guide your Inhale deeply and we'll end with a long sat nam. Sat nam. And another one. Sat nam. And finally. Sat Peace to all, light to all, love to all, be the peace to all, be the light to all, be the love to all, and be somebody's angel. Thank you. I think uh, Raymond's going to wrap this up for us, right? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, just uh, thank you, everybody. It was a beautiful evening to share in this way. So, Dave, thank you for suggesting this. And, Jopdarm, it was just very moving to get to be with you. Uh, and nice to be with all of you. Uh, love is my religion. So, creating a world where love wins. You can find us at L I M R. Dot us or go to the Facebook event that, uh, that Dave set up. And thank you so much for participating. And if you choose to donate, we would love that too. But we also just love your energy tonight. So thank you. I have one more thing. Yeah. So for me to have Job Dharam is just, I, Wahe Guru, I, just okay. awesome. And uh, this isn't normally what I get it my classes so uh, for me it's just a treat and uh sad sadnam sadnam thank you all <laughs> virtually for a moment or two sadnam all right say hello to everyone aloha 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 <laughs> people from all over great hi eva <laughs> All right, see you guys. Bye. May the long time sun shine upon you and all. And the pure